Good morning, good evening, good night, good day. Good luck. God bless. Anyway, no, it's uh, December 14th. So that means like nine more shopping days till Christmas. Okay. And, uh, and if that sends you into like an anxiety thing or a cynical thing or kind of anything, you probably need iWix products to <laughs> work through some of these traumas and, and neuroses. So uh, we, we have David Bell with us today and it's just really cool. He's, uh, uh, we've been connecting and uh, via emails and stuff for a long time and he is a psychotherapist personally oriented psychotherapist he uses psychotherapist knowledge with his clients and of course I've done quite a bit of the same working with my clients uh, over the last decade or so so a lot of you know who knows what it's just going to get into we'll just follow the flow and see where it goes and we are uh, broadcasting on our end from beautiful downtown well it's not really downtown but it's Monroe Louisiana down by the river where I didn't shoot my baby, but it's down by the river here in Monroe. It's the Wachita. That's a Neil Young song, a uh, reference. Down by the river, I shot my baby. For you guys, you know. Lovely. The yeah. It was, a, it was a repentance song, I think. But, um, yeah, so here we are, and we come down here to be closer to Pam's mother who is getting uh, a bit older, as we all are, and yeah, to help out. So it's been a, uh, a nice geographic transition and has a nice big yard out here. It's nice for Lucy. And I take her to um, run along the river every morning for about a mile and change, keep her happy and in shape. And, and I do my own work. Matter of fact, I've been kind of got ill uh, starting on Saturday, and we were playing tennis, Pam and I, and then I was I was comfortably ahead, and then I started going, and Pam leaped ahead and beat me, six to five. So, well, Pam, do we have any announcements? Oh, I know announcements. A really exciting thing. We're 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 um, a, releasing a new product. Pam, your face froze. Um, this week, called uh, the Teachings of Wan Su. The teachings of Wan Su, you say, I do, and uh, this is a product that's been created by our just brilliant resident wizard, uh, Lee Spusta. And if you guys know him from Deep Delta, from Deep Recovery, from Solar Infusion, and uh, various other tracks, he's really brilliant. He's a great musician. All the instrumentation you hear on the tracks are actually played by him. They're not recordings. Uh, he has a great sense of. Uh, he's a, and I played with him. Uh, we visited him in um, um, Southern California, and when I was with, uh, we met up with my good friend Doc, Bob Weathers, Doctor Bob Weathers, whom we will probably meet here very shortly. It'd be great to interview him here, and we played, and we in a little studio, a band studio, we were in, and we had a great and fantastic guitarist and musician. So we had just a wonderful time. Anyway, he uh, produced this um, this kind of pioneering thing. Never quite been done this kind of the spiritual teaching adventure using entrainment technology and i have great hopes for this uh as being just the first of many um such tracks and i'm very interested in, in incorporating this into the new kind of vr virtual reality revolution and uh, other stuff in in our our talks uh spiritual tech talent technologies 2.0 and then later connecting with a lot of people we that I, I converse with and on that uh, at that summit um we went to the trans tech 2016 uh convention or conference rather in palo alto and uh had really connected with people so there's a, there's a lot of really cool things that are going on in the uh, trans tech world right now like never before there's a lot of I mean, there's a real coming together of kind of the original pioneers and these new uh, pioneers and middle pioneers and all of this stuff coming together and collaborating in some really effective ways. And um, also some exciting stuff. So that'll be, Pam, when will that be available? We will be launching uh, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. So get a good night's sleep. Get ready. 
it's a coming your way. And it's about five different tracks, I think. And, and some of them are, uh, one of the last one is a guided one. And then the last one is just the entrainment music. So you can use, you know, I, I suggest go through the whole darn thing, the whole adventure at first, and then go through a couple of times. And then you can just use the, the meditative parts for, for meditation as uh, you continue on. So that's, that's really, it's really cool. Beautiful uh, cover that Pam created and, and uh, just, just exciting stuff. And what else? Um, our stuff is being uh, our stuff. iWeek technologies are being released in China this month. So, wow, pretty cool. Um, and uh, we had a, uh, a really beautiful group of uh, Chinese entrepreneurs and business people um, who approached us and asked us to do a license, licensing deal. And anyway, we, you know, we talked and connected and it's extraordinary. Um, um, Anyway, the, the 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 head of the group, I guess, just say his name, his name is Jack Chen, and um, ah. by now. But there he is, coming to you from deepest darkest Baltimore, Maryland area, David Bell. And Thanks. David, the, what, what I understand uh, from just the, the the information is that you're a therapist, uh, a transpersonal mm -hmm. therapist, who is also using eye awake technologies in your own life and with your clients. Is that a pretty accurate statement? Um, yeah, I, my. I, I consider myself an experiential psychotherapist. Um, the transpersonal nature of it is, is sort of implicit in the model that I generally work from. Well, good. Yeah. So tell, tell us a little bit about, you know, your background and how you became, you know, a healer, a therapist and started using meditation and meditational tools and et cetera. Um, um, uh, I, I'll could sum it up as like, you know, we all have our personal long story. We're, we're the protagonist, but, um, um, came out of high school, very profoundly socially anxious and insecure, didn't know where to go. Um, picked a random direction that sounded cool at the time. I became a paramedic for a while, actually. Um, I had a karate sensei who I kind of looked up to, who was, um, one, one part of a bodyguard for Tony Robbins. So I got into the self-help world and we did, we did Qigong. And so I did much of that. Then we meditated a little bit doing the Qigong and Tai Chi and our Kempo Karate. So I was all into that world, Qigong self-help. Um, started meditating haphazardly for years. Um, became a, uh, became a um, paramedic kind of just to grow up and to find a direction. It wasn't, I loved it, but it wasn't my main passion. And um, went through years of therapy. Um, realized that, that, um, well, so my, my, the first therapist I ever saw, so basically what, what got me on the more, the, the deeper dimensions of things was that I was working with a hypnotherapist, which was like the first the therapist I've ever seen, actually. And um, she was transpersonal, new agey, also did a lot of NLP, neuro linguistic programming, things like that. And I had a, I was having a lot of weird shifts at the time going up, going from a very depressed part of my life. And it opened me up to um, an experience I call a Kensho, because I, I have a background in Zen, um, which means a temporary enlightenment experience. And it was a, it was three, three days of basically a smorgasbord of many non, well, you know, all the words, non-dual, all that, all, all that stuff, like a, like a little bit of everything is kind of was. And after that, I got obsessed with uh, everything, meditation, spirituality. Um, now, I mean, was that Kinsho experience, was it spontaneous or were you meditating or you just like, bam, it just happened? I was watching TV. Oh. <laughs> and I had the, in, it was the weirdest thing. It came from a motoric thing. I, I realized I, I, um, I held my, I used to hold myself in a lot. Like it's hard to see, but like, you know, you hold just my legs together, my arms together. Mm -hmm. You hold myself away from my experience, my direct experience. So I experimented what I learned from all the Tony Robbins, you know, change your physiology, change your state. So I experimented with like hold myself open and closed and all those different things. And suddenly everything kind of dropped away and all, it all kind of happened. It, it wasn't just mystical. I was very, sober i was functional that's the beauty of it but yeah it was smallest insight actually yeah i i 
I, I love to hear these stories. And, you know, if you want to maybe expand a little bit more on it before we move on, um, that'd be great. You know, just a few of maybe the insights or, you know, feelings, things, that sort of thing heard for you. Well, there was a lot that mirrors a lot of many other people's awakening experiences. Um, but um, the, the, one of my main, it took, it's taken me years and one Zen master, I never really had a teacher in that tradition, but said it can take you a lifetime to figure out what, ex, what an experience like that truly means, mm. why you had it. And it unfolds little by little. And um, one of the main things I learned from that, that I actually had a f hard time finding in almost any Eastern and Western spiritual path is that is the, the meaning of the human being and the human form. And I realized that's what I'm passionate about. Not, not about transcending, not about um, being in an altered state, but, but my, my inquiry. And I feel like everybody who's, kind of been set along a path has a specific inquiry that's very personal to their heart. Mm -hmm. And me, it's like the meaning of meaning of our incarnation. What, why, you know, so it's, so everything's a non-dual everything. And, you know, it's, it's all um, impermanence. It's all this and that, and, you know, holographic, whatever you could, you know, if anybody's read mystical teachings knows basically the academic answer as I call it. But, um, but why am I this here now? Why did I just kind of awaken? I'm like, oh, I'm this being with arms and legs and biology and family and society, all, all that. So it's taken me on that path. And I think that's a seed of becoming a psychotherapist, wanting to work with people in a more secular way. Yeah. As opposed to being you know, explicitly um, meditative or metaphysical. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I've said that a, a lot on the on this, the show, this telephone, these conversations we have. That it really takes both sides of the street. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the the ex, the exclusively transcendent paths are mm -hmm. fraught with disaster because mm -hmm. they they deny the shadow, they deny the ego, yes, and they get yes. their kicked by said things <laughs> that have been denied the ego mm -hmm. and the shadow. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of the street, if you're just doing just ego level stuff. Well, yeah. that can only take you so far and you become, you know, dog chasing its own tail. So it's yeah. like you really got to blend, you know, both the, yes. the, the non-dual, the mm -hmm. ever-present, mm -hmm. unfathomable, beyond time and space dimension that's always present and everything. And also being here mm -hmm. in the world. So how do you know, so you've got to prepare the, and I'm just ranting on here, but you've got yeah. to do the ego work so that mm -hmm. when you do are blessed or if you do have a practice that takes you into these mm -hmm. things, deep, profound, non-dual, transpersonal, transcendent realms, you can bring them together and you, you become a kind of a, a, a conveyor or an instrument or a channel for that beauty and the wisdom and the creativity and compassion and all the good stuff that arises from that yeah. kind of connection. And not only do you have to have a wake Kensho experience, you've mm -hmm. got to stabilize that and stay awake. It's if you the don't, taste that, that yeah. set, people need that taste to send them along a path, you know, the Absolutely, the experiences yeah. aren't the end result. They're just, they're, to me, they're more of a side effect. But um, yeah, my my biggest influence, I actually become a psychotherapist and practice the way I do and everything. I mentioned my email is the works of Almas or Ali Hamid. Are you familiar with that, that yes, school? Yes, indeed. Yes, we are. Yeah, we have lots of friends uh, yeah. uh, that did it. We had to read his books when we were in grad school. And yes, mm -hmm. we're quite familiar with uh, Diamond Approach. It, I loved his his weaving of the psychodynamic and, and psychological with um, the meditative and spiritual, and that that was the whole. He, his teachings were actually the whole reason I became a psychotherapist because mm -hmm. I wanted. It was the I'm a I'm a type five, you know, you, you know the neogram two. I I every, I do everything on a hypothesis, so <laughs> it was like um, I, I can look back, I can laugh at myself for how it is, but. It, it set set me on the path, the inquiry of um, how how to do psychological how how can secular psychological work lead to deeper states without having to be particularly spiritual or at least explicitly. <laughs> and the answer to that to me came in, in, in all my searches on like the deepest. I, I studied transpersonal psychotherapies. I studied um, psychosynthesis 
many other mm-hmm. things. Focusing, of course, that's the work of Eugene Gendlin. And that, that started sure. to send me on the different path towards the experiential and emotion focused therapies. And uh, do you want me to talk about the, my particular form of therapy? Oh, you're doing great. You just go wherever, you just keep on with doing whatever you're doing. That's fine. Okay. Um, I, um, I found the work of Diana Fosha. I don't know if anybody here is uh, aware of Diana Fosha and um, it's a mouthful. It's called AEDP. We hate the A. It's, it comes from the old days of, of the holdover of brief therapies that are not really in vogue anymore, which it's, it's accelerated experiential dynamic psychotherapy. We'd rather call it experiential dynamic psychotherapy because it's like a marriage of psychodynamic and experiential sort of. Um, I, I found her in a, in a anthology of books on the, the newer school, um, interpersonal neurobiology and yeah, someone sent the link to ADP Institute. And, um, I, she had a, a, a profoundly pre- precise, um, map of deeply processing emotional experience and especially positive trans transformational and positive affects to completion leading to a state she calls core state, which um, off the top of my head, it's a state of profound peace, compassion, expansiveness, and many other higher qualities of states. It's like after all the storms, after everything's processed, you suddenly come to your nature. And and she she had a transcript and it was some young man she was working with who she processed his experiences until this person saw himself in light and the way he at least described it to his experience. And I, when I read that transcript and that map, I was like, this is it. Like, what is this? And since then I've been um, working towards certification in it, um, been trained in it pretty vigorously at times. It's I have an ongoing group. I'm going to do some retreats in it. It's, we, we learn by our videos being, um, being seen, ther- therapy videos we're literally doing being seen by my mentor and my teacher in it. And um, it's, it's a therapy that's profoundly mindful, profoundly nonverbal or, or the, the nonverbals are favored over. It's not, it's, it's a, it's even beyond relational therapy. It's highly intersubjective, but it's, it, it, it's, um, it's hard to describe without seeing it, but it's, it's one of, there, there's other many cousin approaches. I don't put it, say this is the best experiential, therapy out there but it's it's the one that clicked with me the most you know so is it it's using actually using the body as the vehicle uh for yeah the body and um nonverbal ex- um, embodied somatic experience we mm-hmm. we have a development we call in the seven channels of experience which um i don't have them all the top of my head they're like somatic emotional energetic auditory visual kinetic kinesthetic, something like that. So there's all these different mindful channels of experience. We try to track them very precisely moment by moment. Like, like something just shifted there. We see like a slightest tinge of something, slightest difference in their color as they say something. We, we can theoretically just sit there with them and say, you know, what's in this silence? Stay with that in your body. That'd be too much pressure, but on a person, but you, you have to talk, but it's, it's so much beyond talk therapy where, Talk therapy is almost pejorative to you know, the work I do. Yeah, yeah it, can, it can get in the way. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And, and it's interesting what you said about, you know, pursuing uh, the positive emotions mm-hmm. as a doorway, because a lot of times in psychotherapy, I mean, people go to psychotherapy because they're suffering. Mm-hmm. And, you know, those of us who meditate uh, mm-hmm. can be very aware of when the, when the painful stuff starts to come yeah. up, how we like, eh, 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 <laughs> you know, yeah. try to block it or, or, mm-hmm. or, fix it or whatever, instead of just really opening, surrendering, being present to it. Yes. It yes. Also can be with positive emotions because mm-hmm. of whatever, you know, we don't feel comfortable with being happy. Yeah. You know, the, the great uh, autobiography by C.S. Lewis, surprised by joy, you know, yes. there was so much joy available. We didn't know what to do with that. And exactly. we can also get all neurotic that can push that away. Not fully, mm-hmm. fully be present with that. I think I've seen that quote. Um, I think Diana Fosha may have, um, quoted that exact quote in one of her writings that there there's a uh she she i think is the 
her, this work like fulfills the promise of positive psychology as well. It doesn't deny the negative, but we, it, it works, it, it leverages positive relational experiences as well as positive affect itself and change experience. So, and we're very aware of how, yeah, like if, uh, like say a client has severe trauma, they feel joy with me because of some emotion gets processed to completion. And then suddenly they're, they're, they're stuck. They're like a child that's so afraid that since they're feeling joy, they're going to be beaten or something. Yep. As a child, they were, you know, the, the other shoe's going to drop if I, if I let, let out a spontaneous child emotion. And so then that's, that's more grist for the mill to work with. We, we, we have, there's, there's a few sayings we have in ADP. I just want to just put out there real quick. It's, um, be a transformance detective. I, we, we're taught, um, favor the, uh, favor the positive, favor the, and glue the glimmer. And the glue, the glimmer is the slightest glimmer of something positive, especially interrelational um, positive. You know, what's it like to express this to me when you've been alone to it so long? It's a lot about undoing aloneness. Yeah, favor the glimmer. And um, we'll glue the glimmer. And so it's um, the slightest glimmer is like can be can like open up. We, we leverage it. It can, it can like be like a slightest dot of light. And we just want to open that up and see what's there. And so, so it makes therapy significantly more palatable than, than just focusing on the pathological and the negative. Mm -hmm. And then you, then you can go into the negative much easier because you've had that new positive relational experience. Yeah. yeah and you realize that, that all the negative ultimately when it, when it's dealt with to, you know, to, mm -hmm. to the, the point of, of transmuting or transformation that mm -hmm. becomes the fuel mm -hmm. for wisdom, for, for growth, yeah. I love that. You know, I love the, the school of positive psychology. Yeah. Talk about authentic happiness, authentic joy. Mm -hmm. They're very important mm -hmm. uh, concepts. And, and so much of our of our suffering, and I'll just talk about America right now, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we've gone for things that don't produce authentic yeah. joy, drugs, for example, or other addictions. Yes. And, and we've missed what really, what really, you know, makes us authentic authentically happy mm -hmm. and, uh, you know mm -hmm. there's a lot of work to be done with a lot of responsibility a lot of stuff that goes into that but that's really the goal and if mm -hmm. we i think if we teach that you know basic yeah. stuff to kids you know wow. uh, what a you know there, yeah there's a lot of you know there's a lot of wrong you know deviations and and caves and dark woods and places mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. up by the orcs and the dragons and stuff like that mm -hmm. but if you really want to find your own path this is what it takes you know you got to find your purpose mm -hmm. you got to find you got to deal with your your fears your insecurities your traumas mm -hmm. your pain we all have them and yeah. you know but this is what's this is what you know it's service and joy and creativity yeah. and honesty and integrity and and finding your path of service into the mm -hmm. world and all of these things it's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. tremendously exciting and all of that is best processed um interrelationally that's how we're human beings that we're wired of course that's i'm that's that's one thing i'm fascinated by how how changes leverage in, especially dyadically, but sometimes triadically, three together or two together. Not everybody knows what dyad means. And we, how, and that's that's kind of brought me to where my personal path has gotten. Do you want me to talk about that a little bit or more about I awake? What, what do you, well, yeah. Well, how do you how do you you know use I awake and meditation mm -hmm. with your in your own practice and and with your clients? I mean, um, you know, see. What you're well, it. Let's see. I one thing I do is I give away the a CD of the um, free stuff, the tracks you give on the site. Cause I'm not just going to give anything away, of course. But um, to clients, and then I reference I awake or some people who are more tech savvy. I, I do that more for possibly low income clients who don't have money to buy anything and or may not have internet access. So, but um, many people I reference the site. I say go here, download these. You know. Um, sometimes people come in overwhelmed and I do all the, the, we're, my therapy is very much about regulating anxiety. So you feel safe. It's a safe place. It's not about helping anxiety to get to the emotional cause. It's about down regulating anxiety just mm -hmm. enough. And, um, sometimes right, just enough. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you need to be just enough, not too high, but sometimes, um, it, it, the person's issues and whoever they are that day, it's just not enough. I can't guide them through anything. They, they won't be in that instant subjective space with me. That might be too frightening, anything. And I'm possibly it's because I, I'm not an expert in ADP. I'm in the learning process of it. But 
Um, so I hell have sometimes have people in that state like, can we listen to five or ten minutes of a certain when that some of that sound stuff? It just sounds like rain, but it's I tell them that you know I gotta disclose I can't say it's just the sound. I say that the it's got a lot in it that can change you know your state quickly, and it's it's got the I tell them just a little bit of what they can understand. And some people love it, and some people are like, yeah, let's do a few minutes of that, and it almost invariably changes their state for the better. I, and I've, I haven't seen it. I've used it. There's a particular client who had profound PTSD and complex bereavement and everything you can imagine happened to this person. And he, he came in almost all the time and I, I was a little afraid to use, um, I think the, the primary meditation track with him, but, and I was wondering what it would bring up, if it would be overwhelming. It, it, it um, had them drop down every time it worked. Isn't that something? Yeah. yeah. We, we get, we get very, you know, we, when, when I first started using this technology some 11 years ago, 12 years ago, uh, I awake wasn't around and I was using mm -hmm. the products that were available and, and mm -hmm. all, but I, I would experience overwhelm and cause I had a lot of trauma mm -hmm. that I was sitting on yeah. and it was, it was really scary, but my cussedness just kept me at it cause I knew I was going to have to confront this stuff mm -hmm. and it was a process mm -hmm. of getting well. But we don't get a whole lot of that with I awake that people are saying, Hey, this is just kicking my ass. Yeah. Most people are, you know, at least hopefully the people are having experience they let us know because that's what mm -hmm. we want, but it seems to be working really well uh, in that regard. Um, and you know, today I had a meditation and I went off and run my dog and I, I trained my, you know, I have earbuds. So I'm in training lightly while I drive around and it's not meditate, mm -hmm. it's kind of preparation for meditation. Mm -hmm. Then a train cut off. But anyway, I got like 40 minutes of entrainment. And before I got to, to meditation, I only had 40 minutes. I do that too. I, I, was, I, was handled, I was handed a, just a big old sandwich of suffering, darkness, pain, resentment, mm -hmm. hatred, all these shadow emotions. Mm -hmm. like, Yuck. You know? And then it was like... Got and we project it out sometimes, right? Yeah, so the, everything, everything around us that we feel negative. Right. Did, did that for a while. And then uh, finally just said, okay, just shut up. And, you know, do away with the thought forms and just stay with mm. it. And about mm -hmm. the last mm -hmm. 10 minutes, 40 minute meditation, it began to, mm. like you said, that glimmer, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. little light in the dark. And it began to, mm. you know, and again, oh, thank mm -hmm. you. I remember again, this lesson, we're called to be present in the darkness, just as we are yes. in the light and the joy. So yes, uh, it was beautiful. Yeah, I, I was feeling, I've had a lot of shadow come up in the last few weeks that hasn't processed until today. I listened to about 40 minutes of the releasing tracks. I was listening to the heart wave every day and it was bringing a lot up, but it wasn't processing fully. And so I had to really maybe act a little bit out and also the release tracks. Now I'm completely in a different place. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. right. yeah not, not, not. And, and when you go through that on a regular basis, you know, you, you, call, we, you go through and we process mm -hmm. this pain and darkness and we come at it through mm -hmm. with our practice. It begins to give you hope, you know, that, mm -hmm. that, you know, that pain and suffering is not just something to crush and overwhelm, yeah. but it's, it's actually, it's actually how we grow and yes. we're called to, to be present with it. And, uh, and it brings a great gift if you stay present with it. It's mm -hmm. where we find god you know or whatever yes. that mystery is uh in, in that darkness and it, it yeah i um and many clients um listen to it the, the free tracks um on a regular basis many of them um some of them i i feel that some of their their change their at least ongoing change is in relation to using those tracks at least on a slow ongoing basis if there's a mm -hmm. there's a corrective because everything in modern life is, of course, we spend so long in beta when we're evolved to be much more in alpha and our waking lives. So we're, so everybody's got anxiety. Everybody's up here. You know, we have a, we have a thing in ADP where there's anxiety and defenses. It's like up here and we want to drop down. It's like this inverse triangle and we want to drop down into our direct experience. And people have such a hard time dropping down. That's, that's what we do in ADP. We want to drop down into our embodied experience and, I'm not much better than my clients, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just a couple of feet ahead of you in the race, but you know, yeah. this is what I'm doing up here. Yeah. Do, do, do you find that uh, you have to get people at first just to be aware of their defensive mechanisms and their strategies? Do, does everybody know that they're really defended or is that mm. you're going to have to start sometime? 
Most people don't. They they see themselves in the head. It's funny. Even people who it, referencing neogram who are the heart types, many of the times still feel that they're they're in their heads. Um, and so we our, our way of working it in in AADP is very very much to disarm defenses, but and it it came from a school of psychotherapy that was that psychodynamic. Therapy that that would like go head to head against defenses. It's evolved since then. It's called ISTDP, intensive short term dynamic psychotherapy. And yeah, if you um, if you go head to head against my defenses as a counterphobic six, and I'm just like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How's that? I'm, I'm, I'm five. I'll intellectualize and dissociate, and and <laughs> then my claim will come out too. So yeah. So we we uh, the genius of Diana Fosha is is to di disarm defenses and when when defenses become explicit we um we're not pathologizing so we see everything as adaptive i would go so far as to say the ego itself and i'm referencing all moss here of course the ego itself is adaptive it's just misguided you know it, it every it, it it adapted to in you know unawakened society basically that's that's why an ego is is um and um, so when we come up against defenses, we're going to, for, my first thought is not that, oh no, this is a defense. I'm like, ooh, this, this is somewhere to work and this is good. It, there's something adaptive. They're showing me something about themselves that's, we're not the only therapy that does that, but like we, we, we want to, sometimes you have to point out defense, the way the costs and benefits, you have to, um, you have to just make it explicit. We, 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 we make the implicit explicit like any other dynamic therapy does. And yeah, yeah. And uh, who was that? Uh, a teacher of ours, um, I can't remember okay. anyway, but he talked about the, the old soldier and I yeah. gave him a book on it, but he would reference these, um, all these Japanese soldiers that were left on these islands after mm -hmm. the war. They never surrendered. They kept fighting for the emperor. The war mm -hmm. was over. And meantime, you know, U.S. and Japan are great friends right. and, partners and all this stuff. And they're still out with a rusty bayonet sticking, you know, people's cows and pigs and farmers, you know, coming out mm -hmm. of the jungle going bonsai. And it mm -hmm. took, you know, it took Japanese reporters to go and actually say, hey, come on out. You know, we, we you know, we're so we honor you so that. much for being a brave, faithful soldier. Yeah. But the war is over, <laughs> you know, come yes. on out. And they're yes. like, you know, so we have these offenses, you know, which were really appropriate, I suppose, when the war mm -hmm. was going on. But then mm -hmm. the war is over, mm -hmm. and we're still carrying these things with us from that kept us safe as children. Mm -hmm. Our, in a five's case, the ability to dissociate yeah. and can be extremely useful. You yeah, know? did you say dissociate? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I, I want to mention that I think that's why I've, and I've said it on the forum before, um, why I've, I've gone back and forth with brain entrainment itself, because I... What I think sometimes I um, think what is overwhelm is really coming up on my defensive dissociation because there is a strong derepressive um, aspect to to this these your your works you know to the to I awake products itself and um, you know a, a five to me a type a enneagram type five's core defense most primitive defense is dissociation dissociation sure. yeah I um. That that fly in the wall. I mean, the worst thing that that worked for me as a paramedic, actually. Even though you won't, you wouldn't think a type five as a paramedic, but the worse a call got, the more objective I would get. Absolutely. And the lead, less reactive, and the more I would just know what to do. And people would suddenly follow me, like, "Whoa, this this guy who's seen kind of anxious and grounded now suddenly he knows what to do." You know. <laughs> so I, I would I would be a more competent paramedic the worse a situation was. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've, that, I've also, that's where I dissociation have, worked. You know? I have a five wing, yeah, and I've noticed that too in emergency mm -hmm. situation. I get very clear. Mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. All comes together. Hey, he's finally awake. Yes. You know, it's a disaster yes. to, to happen, but then I know, yeah. I'm fine, and I'm really good in 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 times of of increased yeah. stress and emergency. Yeah, my best friend's a counterphobic six with a seven wing. He's yeah. similar but different. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Pam has often insisted that I have a seven wing, but I'm pretty sure it's five. I think so, after work, the, the wings fill out. I'm, I'm, I'm realizing a lot more of my six, which I've disowned. I've had a lot of problems with six. <laughs> Get out of here. Right. Yeah, so I'm definitely five four. I'm very much that. I act like the intellectual boss of that brooding side. 
<laughs> no, but you made a comment. You said that that the uh, the Iowa tracks can be depressive. Is that the word you used? D D D repressive. D repressive. Mean? Say more about that word. I'm not even sure um, what that means. Possibly just from dropping down. I'm sorry. I use a lot of big psychodynamic words. Um, again, it's a five thing. I got I got to talk above. You know, use use why use. Like some, some of them, by the way, some of my, good, best friends, but, my best friends and biggest heroes are five, so five on. I know Yavi identifies as a five, but um, <laughs> um, um, de-repressive, where it's just simply bringing out um, emotional material that has been, totally. you know, that has been pushed down and repressed and, and unseen or projected outwards, you know, our shadow, our shadow. And when it comes up, one of the things I learned from AD my my work is that with emotion we don't want to feel or see comes anxiety but there i call them fraternal twins and i i get i get like manic i'm almost like a seven sometimes when a lot of stuff's coming up and i'm i'm like all over the place and then i sit and i realize wait this is this anxiety has to do with something i'm feeling so it's like the canary in the cold mine i'm actually feeling something i don't want to feel so what i find is that um after using certain tracks, especially the meditation tracks or any of the, especially Delta, especially any of the slower waves, I, um, eventually something will come up like moods and feelings. And, and to the, I'm to the point I've been meditating a long time where a lot of, I don't get as much story with it. I don't get as much cognitive. Yeah, material. Your mother's knocking. I don't get as much mental, mental Somebody. stories with it. And it's just there. It's just, like 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 what what's been coming up using the heart wave tracks for several weeks is just stuff that's just there. I don't have an explicit story with it. You know, that's why. You know, How I, nice. Yeah, I, I I've experienced that also. A lot mm -hmm. of times when when pain or suffering or stuff dark stuff will come up, I'll know exactly mm -hmm. what it is. My my head will want to spin stories about it and blah yeah. blah. blah yeah. Narratives. Sometimes I don't. It's just like I'm suffering. It's pain. Yeah. You know, I'm just called to, to experience this mm -hmm. right now. And mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the one, one of the cool things about that I found at, at, and especially good for fives, you know, because the, the defense of a five is dissociate, you know, we mm -hmm. all have our different versions of that. And, yeah. And fives aren't the um, only people that dissociate the only points, but you do it better mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. Uh, I'm good at more, it. More skillful at it. But um, is that this stuff is really somatic, you know, and, mm -hmm. and oftentimes, you know, that you, you have a five that practices, um, a regular meditation and mm -hmm. you know they they've gotten extremely good at dissociating from everything and they think they're enlightened no they're just really dissociated and they haven't yes. dealt with anything you know? oh. so this stuff keeps you from i mean it's very faithful to to bring that un uniting of, of mind body spirit mm -hmm. subtle body uh gross body uh causal body etc and it's awesome I literally do not, I, I may have been meditating a long time, maybe 15 years or so, but only about half that time I've actually been actually meditating in any good way because I've been dissociated half the time. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've spent whole days and retreats in my head. Like I didn't even drop down, didn't even ground. <laughs> Yeah, I know, and I, I have that capacity too, you know, and, and it's sometimes, it's, like you said, nice. emergency situation, it's extraordinarily good, and mm -hmm. you go back and process the feelings later, you don't really have time to do that, and, uh, and yep. um, you know, I was a military policeman, so we dealt with, you know, mm -hmm. stuff, really? and um, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. I felt I was really good when, uh, mm -hmm. I, my bet, when, when things were worst, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't realize you were an MP at one point. Yeah, yeah. Well, at my age, you know, you start telling the story, and it's like the miniseries part two. You know, continues. <laughs> so, so, like we, when we were, I was a wilderness guide. You know, one of the things that had my students do, we were out mm -hmm. yandering in the wilderness for months mm -hmm. at a time, uh, was to tell their life story around around the campfire. You know, mm -hmm. and when you're fourteen, fifteen, or sixteen, Ooh. But, you know, it's not that much, or it can be that much, depending oh. on. That. And then my second grade teacher, you know, I can get yeah, really uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. get long. But anyway, so they said, well, tell your story. Or tell your story, who they were. And I would say, well, it would take a long, long time. So I, I, I really got an elevator speech, mm. life story thing going. But sometimes it's just, yeah, to lay it all out. Maybe maybe another book, another time. <laughs> and your book's next on my list. I, I, I work with 
with um, those with addiction on outpatient basis. And I have worked in inpatient yeah. addictions. I, I, I emailed you all about it. I, inpatient addiction. Now, yeah. I'll pay the, uh, I used to work in IOP and outpatient addiction groups. And um, I enjoy most doing psychotherapy with, with them, but it's like, I've told you it's, I, it, addiction is one thing that like, so, so like, like I, I want to tell the people out there what I've, what I've experienced, how, how much I've learned to respect addiction. Um, to me, even some of the worst trauma is relatively easy to work with actually. And um, like severe complex trauma, um, I've been able to turn around with this work in haphazardly. Yes. But um, with addiction, I've had, and people once in a while, people have transpersonal experiences in, in this type of therapy on a regular basis. Um, not like all the time, but it happens. We People get into yeah. core state and they, they experience peace. I've had people with addiction love empty chair work, which is not explicitly part of ADP, but it works extremely well. And um, ego state work, stuff like that. They're dialoguing with their addic 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 addictive part. And and then they they have some sort of transpersonal experience. Things are all different. I mean, I even tell them this this does this will not cure addiction. This is just this might just accelerate your path to wanting to become sober to that that click. But then they're they're back full fully on in it. So addiction is is, is a force to contend with. You know. Exactly. Yeah, that's a nice way to nice way to put it. You know, this is not. Yeah necessarily cure but maybe this will help you clarify yeah what you wanted to continue i mean that's yeah. the first stages of change is to realize that you have mm -hmm. a problem and what do i yeah. want to do about it do i just want to yeah. fade away you know yeah and the disease or i want to like okay maybe there's you know uh, see a little bit of light and glue it glue the glimmer as he said mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. work with that it's, it's a fascinating very complex and not one size fits all you have to be no. really really sensitive to different different no. uh, issues going on and ethnic cultural religious some uh, people do it for trauma and psychological and emotional reasons some people just are for whatever reason they're wired to like to be in an altered state and being high yeah but, and, and it's a count of it for purpose you know i mean i've never mm -hmm, done that mm -hmm. i mean but when you're just like yeah you know yeah. Enough, like too much on it yeah it's just like, uh, and it's like uh, yeah and then of course that that uh, mm -hmm. the crash comes uh, yeah brutal so i'm very um, interested in in if this technology and how you've used it and how it can be like leverage, you know, that that's that extra, mm, that's some extra that can help. Absolutely. You know, and I've worked with a lot of, a lot of addicts over the years and, you know, our house was a treatment center for some years and individuals um, via Skype, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I would just say, you know, this is not, this meditation stuff is not uh, a cure, mm -hmm. but it, I think it will give you maybe a 30, 35, to 40 percent edge mm. increase your chances of being able to really sustain this over a lifetime and I that's if you, you know i mean what if you were a tennis player and you were competing and they said give you something well this is going to make you 30 percent better <laughs> you know you'd be winning trophies and yes. having just a yeah. great time so that's that's a significant thing in and of itself it's not enough but as a part of an integrated complete thing dealing with everything that needs to be dealt with it's a huge edge Mm -hmm. And the ability to self-reflect, the ability to begin to experience mm -hmm. a, a really a positive altered states in ways that don't yeah. involve taking drugs and mm -hmm. finding yourself and finding yourself as something to be valued and not something to be poisoned, mm -hmm. and not something to be, you know, commit suicide mm -hmm. with drugs because you hate yourself yes. or you haven't dealt with your stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of applications. Yeah. Just, just improving a basic um, brain chemistry, more serotonin, more dopamine, mm -hmm. less mm -hmm. cortisol, just mm -hmm. feel a little better. So it's and a little easier to get over that next uh, craving. And as you know, John, in the early stages of addiction or of becoming sober, it's extremely difficult for, for them to um, get out of the dysphoric and anhedonic stage. It's where, you know, where nothing feels yeah. good, where your That's right. chemicals are so off the world, you don't get normal pleasure out of anything. And so I think <laughs> some of the tracks, some of the products, energy stuff, no, that's a, that's a great point, and it does help with that a lot in my experience. Yeah. And you know, and so instead of, I mean, and if you don't get people as quickly out of that anhedonic, not being able to experience mm -hmm. pleasure in anything mm -hmm. state, why yeah. the hell not go back to drugs? That yeah. mindset, yeah, you know. So yeah, if they can start feeling better, you know, and you can use exercise and the meditation and mm -hmm. all the stuff and mm -hmm. love and fun and you know mm -hmm. joy and pleasure and all yeah. the things. Uh, yeah. Positive thing, get that into their their, their chances of of, mm -hmm. of long term uh, recovery are going to get mm -hmm. much much better. Yes, that 
Yeah, so I'm excited to um, to um, try to have more people with addiction try this stuff out and use it. And I yeah, absolutely very much will be plugging it for them. So, yeah, well, David, mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that you know you've got some low income clients as well, and mm -hmm. we want to make these tools available whatever people's price range is. So, mm -hmm. if you've got situations, you know that we can support you in making them free or really low cost or whatever you know let's okay. let's talk about it okay 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 i mean the 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 three free tracks given away there is is pretty pretty good stuff pretty strong enough you know i think i kept yeah. saying it was digital euphoria was the other one but I, I, it's gamma right it's gamma burst mm -hmm. that's another one that's a powerful antidepressant of course yeah that is like me and of course we recommend you only do gamma like maybe three times a week because it's pretty powerful and pretty stable. yeah so. Yeah, ga gamma is like um, to me. Ga gamma is like yeah. Where have you been all my life? You know, it's <laughs> better than coffee. It's the the diff different frequencies, different tracks and energies. Kind of sometimes will feel like our missing piece. Like oh, there it is. <laughs> hey, you know, we almost we almost gobbled up an hour here. I wanted to. If there's mm -hmm. anybody have any uh, any comments or questions for David to have a, a chance to do that, so. And, you know, in the meantime, if anybody's thinking about something to ask, David, if you have anything you'd just like, like to, to kind of leave us with, or as kind of a summation or a final, a, a final um, hmm. uh, a, a re resolving this chapter, because hmm. we can definitely continue the conversation. Um, oh, I want to say a little bit about um, where my personal path has taken me and why, why that it, it parallels my psychotherapy work. Um, I... I've I've had back so I, I when I had my big experience I went to Zen then I went to didn't know what I was doing for a while hung out with Quakers they were nice never became a Quaker but they're awesome people um, I really dig the Quakers by the way yeah. sure that they're wonderful well then from the influence of Almas talking about the fourth way I intervention I found the Gurdjieff work pretty obscure approach but um, it's it's basically a Western version of mindfulness training and. Um, then I had a brief stint with a diamond approach, but um, it, it for where I was as far as proximity and financial and everything, it just didn't. Um, I couldn't stay with them. They're they're awesome. I highly recommend them, of course. But um, what they what they they sparked for me um, was an interest in the interpersonal dimension of meditation. And um, they they do they do uh, um, people like Claudio Nirhano Nirhano. Naranjo. Naranjo. I always feel like I'm saying his name wrong. Um, you know, he he um, pioneered um, interpersonal meditation in some of his old writings and influence. And the Enneagram. Hmm? And the Enneagram. And the Enneagram. Yes, yes. I, I think a lot, SLA and a lot, a lot on the West Coast was pioneered that. And when I first um, had experiences doing that in the Diamond Approach, it it was like, it was vert, more powerful than anything I've ever done meditating alone. It, it was just just that interpersonal space, that interpersonal sync with another. Like there's this like amplification of your state. There is. That I've meditated for hours and haven't gotten even near the far. It was just rapid. And um, I went back into the, the Gur Gurdjieff fork briefly, but what I found was um, I found a um, and I swore off Buddhist approaches. I didn't want. I was like been there, done that, but. I ser quite serendipitously found an approach in a local Shambhala center called social meditation, which our whole approach is basically in groups and dyads and triads and small groups, really meditating, really focusing on that interpersonal space. We do all the, a lot of different speaker listener exercises, eye gazing, which most Western people are really, really afraid of. And um, it mirrors and helps my therapeutic approach too, and it's it's amazing. Like you you do enough of that work, and you're changed. Yeah, when we when we were in grad school, Pam and I, that's where we met at JFK many years ago. We there was a lot of experiential stuff. So you mm -hmm. know, and I'm uh, like a sexual subtype, which means I I, mm -hmm. I normally I feel better with one on one. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean I want to get in your pants or I'm always having sex with yeah. everybody. Just means I pr prefer that to groups. Yeah. So they say diet or triad time. I would low crawl to the bathroom across the floor. So anyway, I, but it was it was very good for me, and I have done my share of eye gazing. Mm -hmm. ah! Yeah, you know, yeah. extremely intimate. 
Mm -hmm. uh, amazing, uh, very powerful practice. You know, and you can also do eye gazing with yourself in the mirror, mm -hmm. you know, which is that's like, a that's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. Just, I was doing a lot of that before yeah, I had the experience. One, this one that you guys can try out is, is put on, yeah, put on digital euphoria and just look at your eyes in the mirror. Yes. I, I'd For love a to, half hour and see what happens. I'd love to see people listen to I Wake Tracks and, and then, doing a dyad. That'd be amazing to see. Um, yes, we, indeed. Yeah. We did this amazing, um, last thing I'll, I'll leave you with. But we, when I first started my, my training group in AEDP, we did a dyad work where they do a lot of dyad work there too. Um, people have all kinds of transpersonal experiences, just learning the model of therapy, the therapists do. So um, we did one where there was a speaker and a listener for this. And, and the, the listener had to emotionally support the other person non-verbally. The speaker actually didn't speak. They just had to summon up something that was upsetting them. And you sat there for like 10 minutes in that. And they did. They didn't do it verbally, non-verbally the whole time. Wow. Yeah. Nice. nice that's nice. that's the level we work on ADP and other 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 newer interpersonal neurobiology trauma therapies. There's some of the somatic stuff, Comey or sensory motor. There's all there's some great stuff out there. It, I I'm I got into this because I was obsessed with a new wave of new. I saw a new wave of psychotherapy that's immensely more transformative than ever before. You know, dance, yeah. soul. There's something called coherence therapy. There's right. there's a lot out there. Newer there's, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff, and it's becoming mm -hmm. more, things are becoming more integrated, and yes. and yes. and of course now with the new revolution and transform transformational technologies, you know, it's like this deep transformational mm -hmm. meditation can be with anyone. You know, mm -hmm. holy cow! You know, you don't have to go to the Himalayas or you know, yeah, you know, yeah. Guru or an ashram or this. You just do mm -hmm. the work. You know? So mm -hmm. very very cool, mm -hmm. exciting. Well, David, Pam, do you have anything else you'd like to say before we sign off here? No, Dave, just thanks so much for, for being here and sharing your work. It's, it's, I mean, it's a blessing. Yes. Yeah, so, um, terrific. Thank you so much, David. It's been, it's been, it just time went really fast and that's always a, a good sign when it comes to like, um, you know, like, oh God, you know, it's over. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Oh my God, I got 15 more minutes. Yeah. So, so that's a good sign. And remember, we have, um, what do we have? Nine shopping days left until Christmas. Mm. So uh, if, you know, for your, um, uh, for your friends and loved ones who are on the path or contemplating getting on the path, I awake stuff might be really good. However, for grumpier ones, you might go, well, you give me this. You think I have problems? And they throw it at you. you know? So you get different reactions. <laughs> so it's, anyway, with discretion, uh, they might want to consider that. And it, oh yeah, this is really a very important emergency broadcast message here. Um, Ken Wilber often quips, if you think you're enlightened, go home for the holidays. <laughs> Heard that one. <laughs> and talk about religion and politics and uh, mm -hmm. the recent election with your family and see how that all works out. Yeah. But anyway, a good thing might just to be to talk about football. Uh, but in, in times of greater stress, meditate more, not less. So if you're going home for the holidays or already home, Man, just rest it up. You do an, uh, you know, thirty minutes a day. Go up to an hour. And usually, when I was, uh, my family, my, my dad passed away, and things have shifted. It's not the same constellation that it was before. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would do like an hour and a half, and that kept me about in the zone where I could come out mm -hmm. of my room. And they go, "Why are you isolating your room?" Well, I'm, I'm meditating. I'm going to get home, meditating. They knew I was weird anyway. But anyway, mm -hmm. so so I would do that, and um, it worked really well. Mm -hmm. oh. It's a refuge and a joy. Uh, and anyway, David, thank you so much, man. You're, you're awesome. And uh, any place that people want to contact you, do you do stuff online? Do you use Skype, that kind of therapy also? Um, I don't do Skype yet. So my colleagues do, and they're going to hopefully help me to sh the logistics all around that. Um, yeah. yeah, I've worked with clients over the years on Skype, and I find it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mentor uh, does a lot of Skype sessions. Yeah, and, and so there's non-dual transference of mm -hmm. whatever. It happens mm -hmm. really effectively on yes. Skype. So anyway. Uh, I want to say, too, um, I, 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 at first, I don't want to say what company or who, but there was, I, when I first heard of this stuff, I was turned off by somebody about it, and I was – until I saw, somehow got a Ken Wilber link about talking about I awake, I was like, all right, if Ken Wilber likes it, there must be something to it, or this company must be all right. And <laughs> so I, 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 um, 
only reason I, I stay low to I awake, I have tried other companies and stuff, I'll say, but it's the, the love of being of the people behind it. So I, I feel like the, the what is, it, you're not just, just making a buck. You're not, you know, the, these aren't just products. These are works. These are, so it's. You're absolutely right. I respect um, everything I awake's about. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. And so anyway, folks, this will be recorded so you can uh, listen to it later. It'll be in our archives. And I guess that's about it, eh? Yes. <laughs> okay. So anyway, God bless you. Thank you so you much. You too. You too. Bye, all. Bye.